make either a great Spider-Man villain or a really good, uh, hmm, what's the word I'm looking at? Like, who else? I think she'd also make a good Captain America villain. Uh, Draken, mm, probably Iron Man. Those are a few right there. Anyway, <clears throat> third question. How would you write a crossover between Kim Possible and Ninja Turtles? Hmm, why are you asking me that question, Jason? You thinking of doing something? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, so, KP, TMNT crossover. I think what I would do is, like, have, um... What I would like to do is have Gil... Since we didn't really see Gil in, um... You know, after the whole fishbowl thing when he attacked the school, I'd like to have it that maybe Shredder has kidnapped uh, Gil and has exposed him to mutagen, and now Gil's just so... He's like just this giant man-fish monster, and now Shredder has him working for him, and Kim and Ron kind of uh, get caught up in the mess, along with the turtles. So yeah, have um, Gil involved. Because I... Yeah, I don't think Draken would, would... I think Shredder would not put up with Draken. He may, you know, he may want to have Shigo join the Foot Clan, but I think, I think, yeah, I'd go with Gil to change it up a bit. Especially, and plus, Gil on Mutagen sounds awesome. So thank you for those questions, Jason Voorhees, 2011. Moving on now to Darth Venom, who asks, What are your thoughts on the season finale? Uh, I like it. I think it's it was a nice little wrap up to the show. I thought it would. It had a lot of um, it had a lot of nice little loose ends tied up. I thought it was pretty fun. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> what would happen if Kim and Ron met the Autobots, and what adventures would they go on while dealing with the Decepticons? I think it'd be a lot of fun. I especially like to have like to pair up the Autobots. I think I'd have Ron with like maybe a uh, Wind Charger, and for uh, like for Kim Mirage. I think they they would get along pretty well, uh, so that's all. Uh, so yeah, it'd be cool. All right. How, uh, third question: How would you do a crossover between Kim Possible and Gravity Falls? I think what I would do is have like uh, the two agents we saw in Gravity Falls. Like they said, well, they know who we are, so we need someone to sneak in. So what they would have, they'd call Kim Kim and Ron, and they'd be like, look, the, this Stan guy, he's bad news. And we don't want what he has under that in the mystery shack uh, fall into the wrong hands. So they have Kim and Ron go undercover in Gravity Falls, and maybe have like Kim and Ron kind of s join Wendy's a circle of friends. I think that would be a lot. I think that's where you would go and have them uh, and have Dipper kind of like be suspicious of Kim and Ron the whole time. And meanwhile, Draken, Draken, not teaming up with Gideon, but Draken and Shigo discover that you know this massive power source in Oregon, in Oregon, and they want it. <laughs> anyway, so that's how I, so that's kind of the rough idea of what I'd go with. Uh, so thank you for those questions, Darth Venom. Moving on now to Ira Sutton, who asks, um, <clears throat> how would you feel about Kim, Monique, Zeta, Bonnie, and Yori? coming together to form a Charlie's Angels like fighting team. That'd be awesome. Yeah, let's do, yeah, awesome. <laughs> um second question, if Disney did a live action remake of TV of the TV series Kim Possible, uh, who would you want to play her part uh, play the part of Kim Possible? I don't know. I suck at fan casting and it, it would be Disney actors, so I really I really have no say and keep an animation, really. Just just keep it animation, really. Come on. Third question. At the time, I consider Kim to be the greatest female hero of her generation. Where do you think? Do you think? How do you think she holds up today? I think she's very high. I think she's very high in the female superheroes. She didn't need to depend on you know uh, the whole. She didn't really do. She did the whole female in empowerment thing without being like in your face about female empowerment. It's kind of like the same thing with Wonder Woman, where she could be strong and look pretty, and not need and be the hero of the day outside, you know, and still need a guy's help. It, it it made sense because, like, yeah, I can save the day and I can save the guy, but it's okay if the guy saves me now and again. It was kind of like that. So she was kind of like, in some cases, Kim Possible is like our, gen, you know, the two thousands generation of Wonder Woman, really. Um, so yeah, I think she's uh, I think she's a great uh, she does a great uh, she has a great impression for female uh, heroes. 
So thank you, Ira. Moving on now to uh, Omnitron12345, who asks, Did you ever get the feeling that Disney could have made an entire Kim Possible-based universe of shows since it always felt like a bigger universe going on around? And what we saw clearly showed that superheroes, mutants, and even aliens exist. I feel like, yeah, there was a bigger universe going on since we did have super... We had Team Go. We had several other characters around. And I feel like they could have made a universe, but I didn't think they wanted to... They, even the creators were like, yeah, we don't want to milk this. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. All right. Second question. Do you think Ron should, could, should have kept up with the fearless ferret costume identity for uh, for a little while? If only because it was just too funny seeing Ron trying to be Batman-like superhero. Eh, I think it ran its course. That's all I need to say on the, on the matter. And your final question is, uh, have you read Chigo Kim Fix? And if so, do you honestly think they could have ever come close... I'm going to answer this one because one guy who's asking me how I feel about Kigo, this is actually like me, like him, like Omnitron literally asked me, have I read not only fanfics, but also, you know, honestly think I could, they could have come together. Yeah, I think they could have, and so, I've read several Shigo Kim fics. Most of them are good. A lot of them are good. Because they actually have like general reasons for them to come together rather than, oh, I suddenly love you. They're, and that's the thing I like about the Kigo fan base. It's not only, like, it's gotten larger, but also because, like, they kind of realize that, yeah, these two are probably, like, the ultimate odd couple, and they probably have a lot of angry sex before they actually had passionate sex. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you for those questions, Omnitron. Moving on now to Andrew Varney, who asks, If the Tenth Doctor dropped in by the TARDIS... Would Kim and Ron join him in it for a quick spin through time and space, and what would they think of the Time Lords and vice versa? I think it would be cool just to see them like run around with the Doctor, because they've already done the whole time travel thing in Stitch in Time, and I think the Doctor would be like, oh yeah, you dealt with the whole Supreme One thing. Nice. I was meaning to get around to that. Yeah, I was... I, I totally dropped the ball on that one, but thanks for cleaning that up. <laughs> Second question. Dr. Draken is... Is a, at a villain convention and he meets the following baddies: 80s Skeletor, Ice King, Peridot, Jack Spicer, Eggman, Doctor Giro, Ganon, and Bowser. What hijinks ensue? They all go out for tacos, while Skeletor is ye yelling, "Yeah, I will finally defeat these He-Man tacos!" And Peridot's just like, "You all suck." And <laughs> Doctor Giro and Ganon and, and Bowser would be like, "We're credible villains." Why are we here? <laughs> and Skeletor would be like, I am a credible villain too. No, you're not, Skeletor. I know. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, third question. Your thoughts on a Kim Possible Phineas and Ferb crossover idea? I just came up with it. In it, uh, I would have you would have you said you'd have Draken team up with Doofenshmirtz to cause mischief, maybe even kidnap Kim, Ferb, and Ron, leaving Rufus, Agent P, and Phineas to save the day. Could that? St yeah, I think it could work. If like as long as we have Draken and Doof team up, like I love to see those two get into, into shenanigans. In fact, it's kind of funny because there was a short time, you know, I think the final season of Kim Possible was starting to air when Phineas and Ferb started. So, I think it could have been possible. Again, pun not intended, but yeah. Would have been cool, and I really like the idea. Go, for, I say go for it, Andrew. Sorry to get some water. <laughs> These Q&As do tend to run a while, guys, and we ain't even halfway through. Anyway, moving on now to ActionFan19, who asks, If you ever got Shigo's, on Shigo's good side, assuming she still has, has one... Would you hang out with, like, Buds or try dating her? Yeah, she looks like she'd be up for anal. I'm just saying. Uh, who was your favorite guest appearance on the show? Oh, there were so many. Uh, I can't even think of one. There were, uh, I can't even think of a good, of, like, a really one I was like, oh my god, yeah! Well, George Takei is, is the master, I think he would, like, not the master from Doctor Who, but the one of the temple I thought was really good. All right, favorite Draken. What was your favorite Draken moment? My favorite Draken moment would have to be um, when Draken was lost in the. I think him and Ron were lost in the like the mountains. 
<laughs> and he's just flipping his shit 24 <laughs> 7. Um. Anyway. Uh, second question. Okay, thank you for those questions. Action Fan 19, moving on out of King Nazaru, and he asks. If Kim Possible was involved in an internship pro uh, program and worked for ISIS from Archer, how do you think she'd feel about her co-workers? She'd instantly quit her job, especially hanging out with uh, with someone like Sterling Archer. Yeah, she would not like to hang out with these people. Even, I think Krieger would be a little too creepy towards her. And uh, Cyril, I think she'd be like, shut up, Cyril, all the time. The only person I think she'd want to hang out with is Lana. And even then, that's a stretch. And Archer, I think, even though I think Archer knows, like, she, she'd be under 18, I think Archer would still be like, God damn, if you were 18, I would titty fuck you to death. I mean, sorry, phrasing, I was trying to think out loud. No, I mean inward. Damn it! <laughs> you're hot. I will totally, if, if, hey, if, if your wrong guy breaks up with you, I will, like, kick his ass and hide his body, and then wait for you to be 18 and just plow you. Just plow you like a farm. Uh, yeah, this would totally be Archer's conversation, by the way. <laughs> anyway, second question: How would Ron react if Ramsay so Snow from Game of Thrones joined the Justice League? He'd be the same way I would be. What? And why do I care? So there you go. Third question: How miserable do you think if if Bonnie would Bonnie be if she dated Pelos? Probably pretty shitty. Just going on a limb there. So thank you for those questions, King Nazaru. Moving on now to Kennedy Samara Cody, who asks, um, first question, did Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable and the computer dude that helps them become Black Widow, Hawkeye, and Nick Fury in the in the future? I don't think that's a real thing, sadly. <laughs> there is a meme for that. I, of course. Uh, probably not. Um... Second question. What show would you cross over with Kim Possible? Randy Cunningham, like I said. Uh, did Kim end up marrying Ron? I'd like to think so. Although she'd probably be the dominant one in that relationship. Very dominant. <laughs> so think of those questions, Kennedy. Moving on now to... Uh, moving on now to... Uh, Wolfman the Impaler, who asks, Ron finds himself on planet Vegeta during a full moon, with all and all the Saiyans are giant death monkeys. How does he react? Don't kill me! <laughs> uh. Oh God! A second question: You swap minds with Doctor Draken, and what do you do, what do you do? And act actually have an evil plan that's competent? Fuck the hell out of Shiko. <laughs> To see, use the plant powers that Draken got at the end of the series and smokes to grow and smoke some pot. Uh, bit of column B, bit of column C. I can't lie, guys. Also, the vines, dude. The vines. That's all I need to say. <laughs> all right, third question: Draken and the Monarch from Venture Brothers have a fender better, a bender in a small parking lot. How's it go down? <laughs> They're trading insurance and yelling at each other. Hey. Why does your your wife sounds like a man? You. <laughs> I don't know how the full conversation would go down, but it'd be something like that. Um. Who is your least favorite character from the show? I don't really have one. Um, they're all pretty good in some way or another. Second question: What will Kim and Ron? What if what if Kim and Ron went to Beach City for vacation and they suddenly met up with the Crystal Gems? I think Kim, at this point, would be like, I've encountered aliens, time travelers, mutants, and superheroes. Alien superhero gems don't really bother me that much. <laughs> Alright, what will happen if Kim Possible met up with these spy characters? Sterling Archer, Dudley Puppy and Kitty Catswell, Austin Powers, Brock Sampson, Stan Smith, and Black Dynamite. Archer, she would punch and she would shoot in the balls. Kitty and... Dudley and Kitty, I think she'd be sick of. Austin, she'd try to keep her hands off of him. Brock Sampson, she'd be ter terrified of. Stan would be... Um, she'd punch him in the face. And Black Dynamite, oh, she'd be in bed with him. I mean, despite age difference, I think 
Yeah, no one can resist black dynamite. Dynamite. 